Hi and welcome back. We're in uh, Second Chronicles 21 through 25. Um, we're getting closer to Christmas. I hope uh, everybody's handling the holiday season well. So let's go ahead and lift that up in prayer today. Just that everybody um, is calm, um, good to one another, and just keeping their head on straight. So um, let's open up in prayer. Please join me. Father, I'm thankful to be here online reading your word. I pray that you are in this message, that they hear your voice and not my own. Father God, I thank you for Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ. I pray that we don't forget the reason for the season. I pray that um, we keep our heads on straight, that families are good to one another, that co-workers are good to one another. May, may there be more love and compassion during this time. May we not forget those that are hurting those uh, afflicted by the war, by um, storms and hurricanes and just all kinds of things going on around the world. But still, may we um, celebrate this Christmas with more love and more praying and just uh, just trying to do better each day. I pray that our hearts and minds are somewhere where we can receive, understand, and one day share your word. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Jehoram reigns in Judah and Jehoshaphat rested with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. Then Jehoram, his son, reigned in his place. He had brothers, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah, Jehiel, Zechariah, Azariah, Michael, and Shephtiah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Their father gave them great gifts of silver and gold and precious things with fortified cities in Judah. But he gave the kingdom to Jehoram because he was the firstborn. Now when Jehoram was established over the kingdom of his father, he strengthened himself and killed all his brothers with the sword and all the others of the princes of Israel. Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, just as the house of Ahab had done. For he had the daughter of Ahab as a wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yet the Lord would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he had made with David. And since he had promised to give a lamp to him, to his sons for, forever, in his days Adam revolted against Judah's authority and made a king over themselves. So Jehoram went out with his officers and all his chariots with him, and he rose by night and attacked the Edomites who had surrounded him and the captains of the chariots. Thus, Edom has been in revolt against Judah's authority to this day. At that time, Limna revolted against his rule because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit harlotry and let Judah astray. And a letter came to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord God of your father, <clears throat> David, Okay, so let me do that again. Thus says the Lord God of your father, David, because you have not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat, your father, or in the ways of Asa, king of Judah, but have walked in the ways of, of the kings of Israel and have made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to play the harlot like harlotry of the house of Ahab and also have killed. Let's get in there. So they, they fell off. So you have killed brothers, those of your father's household, who were better than yourself. Behold, the Lord will strike your people with a serious affliction, your children, your wives, and all your possessions, and you will become very sick with a disease of your intestines until your intestines come out by reason of the sickness day by day. Moreover, the Lord stirred up against Jehoram, the spirit of the Philistines and the Arabians who were near the Ethiopians, and they came up to Judah and invaded it and carried away all the possessions that were found in the king's house. And also his sons, and his wives so that there was not a son left to him except Jeho Je Jehoaz, the youngest of his sons. After all this, the Lord struck him in his intestines with an incurable disease. Then it happened in the house, and then it happened in the course of time after the end of two years that his intestines came out because of his sickness. So he died in severe pain and his people made no burning for him like the burning for his fathers. He was 32 years old when he became king. He reigned in Jerusalem eight years. 
and to, to no one's sorrow departed. However, they buried him in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. Chapter 22. Ahaziah reigns in Judah. Then the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, his youngest son, king in his place, for the raiders who came with the Arabians into the camp had killed all the older sons. So the Arabians had come into the camp and killed all the older sons. So Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. Ahaziah was 42 years old when he became king, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Athaliah, the granddaughter of Omri. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother advised him to do wickedly. Therefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab, for they were his counselors after the death of his father, to his destruction. He also followed their advice and went with Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazael, king of Syria, and Ramoth, Gilead, um, Gilead. And the Syrians wounded Jeram. Then he returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds which he had received at Ramah. When he fought against Hazael, king of Syria, and Hazariah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Jehoram, the son of Ahab in Jezreel, because he was sick. His, his going to Jehoram was God's occasion for Ahaziah's downfall. For when he arrived, he went out with Jehoram against Jehu, the son of Nimshi, whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. And it happened when Jehu was executing judgment on the house of Ahab and found the princess of Judah and the sons of Ahaziah's brother who served Ahaziah, that he killed them. Then he searched for Ahaziah and they caught him. He was hiding in Samaria and brought him to Jehu. When they had killed them, they buried him because they said he is the son of Jehoshaphat who sought the Lord with all his heart. So the house of Ahaziah had no one to assume power over the king. There was a lot of... Um, a lot going in that one um brought him to jehu and okay i'm just gonna leave it like that and keep reading it's one of those uh, chapters that you have to go back and get every king of what uh town and, and so i don't want to confuse myself anymore Athaliah reigns in judah 10. now when Athaliah, the mother of ahaziah saw that her son was dead she arose and destroyed all the royal heirs of the house of Judah. But Jehoshaphat, the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons who were being murdered, and put him and his nurse in a bedroom. So Jehoshaphat, Jeho this is a different name, not Jehoshaphat, it's Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Jehoram, the wife of Jehida, the priest, for she was the sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Athaliah so that she did not kill him. And he was hidden with them in the house of God for six years, while Athaliah reigned over the over the land. Joash crowned king of Judah. In the seventh year, Jehoiada strengthened himself and made a covenant with the captains of hundreds, Azariah, the son of Jehoram, Ishmael, the son of Jehohanan, Azariah, the son of Obed, Maaseiah, the son of Adiah, and Elisaphat, the son of Zikri. And they went throughout Judah and gathered the Levites from all the cities of Judah and the chief fathers of Israel, and they came to Jerusalem. Then all the assembly made a covenant with the king in the house of God. And he said to them, Behold, the king's son shall reign as the Lord has said of the sons of David. This is what you shall do. One third of you entering on the Sabbath of the priests and the Levites shall be keeping watch over the doors. One third shall be at the king's house and one third at the gate of the foundation. All the people shall be in the courts of the house of the Lord, but let no one come into the house of the Lord except the priest and those of the Levites who serve. They may go in for they are holy, but all the people shall keep the watch of the Lord and the Levites shall surround the king on all sides. Did I skip a line? <laughs> So only the Levites and the priests are allowed because they are holy. And the Levites shall surround the king on all sides, every man with his weapons in his hand. And whoever comes into the house, let him, let him be put to death. You are to be with the king when he comes in and when he goes out. 
So the Levites and all Judah did according to all that Jehoiada the priest commanded, and each man took his men who were to be on duty on the Sabbath with those that were going off duty on the Sabbath. For Jehoiada the priest had not dismissed the divisions, and Jehoiada the priest gave to the captains of hundreds the spears and large and small shields which had belonged to King David that were in the temple of God. Then he set all the people, every man with his weapon in his hand, from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple, along by the altar and by the temple, all around the king. And they brought out the king's son, put the crown on him, gave him the testimony, and made him king. Then Jehoiada and his sons anointed him, and said, Long live the king, death of Athaliah. Now when Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king, she came to the people in the temple of the Lord. Uh, she she was not serving the Lord and she um, it was a lot of the reason why they were led astray okay um, she came to the people in the temple of the Lord when she looked there was the king standing by his pillar at the entrance and the leaders and the trumpeters were by the king all the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets all the singers with musical instruments and those who led in praise so Atalia tore her clothes and said treason treason and Jehoiada the priest brought out the captains of hundreds who were set over the army and said to them, Take her outside under guard and slay with the sword whoever follows her. For the priest had said, Do not kill her in the house of the Lord. So they seized her, and she went by way of the entrance of the horse gate into Cain's house, and they killed her, killed her there. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between himself, <clears throat> covenant between himself, the people, and the king, that they should be the Lord's people. And all the people went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They broke it in pieces in altars and images and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the, al before the altars. Also Jehoiada appointed the oversight of the house of the Lord to the hand of the priests, the Levites, whom David had assigned in the house of the Lord to offer the burnt offerings of the Lord, as it is written in the law of Moses, with rejoicing and with singing as it was established by David. And he set the gatekeepers at the gates of the house of the Lord, so that no one who was in any way unclean should enter. Then he took the captains of hundreds, the nobles, the governors of the people, and all the people of the land, and brought the king down from the house of the Lord. And they went through the upper gate to the king's house, and set the king on the throne of the king kingdom. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet, for they had slain Athaliah. So they're tearing down the, um, tearing all of these altars and, and trying to go back um, to being right. I keep saying being right with the Lord and following the covenant that was established with their father and King David. Joash repairs the temple. Jo 24. Joash was seven years old when he became king, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zibia of Beersheba. Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. And Jehoiada took two wives for him, and his son, and he had sons and daughters. I like that. So he's following the Lord, and he's um, not with 60 concubines and 10 wives, just two wives. And he's uh, he is following the way of the Lord. Verse 4. Now it happened after this that Joash set his heart on repairing the house of the Lord. Then he gathered the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go out to the cities of Judah and gather from all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year and see that you do it quickly. However, the Levites did not do it quickly. So the king called Jehoiada, the chief priest, and said to him, Why have you not required the Levites to bring in from Judah and from Jerusalem the collection according to the commandment of Moses? the servant of the Lord, and for the assembly of Israel, for the tabernacle witness. For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken into the house of God, and had also presented all the, all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord to the bells, so she gave it to her false gods. Then at the king's command, they made a chest and set it outside at the gate of the house of the Lord. And they made a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem to bring to the Lord the collection that Moses, the servant of God, had imposed on Israel in the wilderness. Then all the leaders and all the people rejoiced, brought their contributions, and put them into the chest. I'm sorry, this is a little, a little bit long, but not too bad. So they put all their contributions in the chest until all had given. So it was at, so this is um, to restore the house of the Lord and so they're collecting monies so it was at that time when the chest was brought to the king's official by the hand of the Levites 
and when they saw that there was much money that the king's scribe and the high priest officer came and emptied the chest and took it and returned it to its place thus they did day by day and gathered money in abundance the king and Jehoiada gave it to those who did the work of the service of the house of the lord and they hired masons and carpenters to repair the house of the lord and also those who worked in iron and bronze to restore the house of the Lord. So the workmen labored and the work was completed by them. They restored the house of God to its original condition and reinforced it. When they had finished, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada. They made from it articles for the house of the Lord, articles for serving and offering spoons and vessels of gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of Jehoiada. Jehoiada, apostasy of Joash. But Jehoiada grew old and was full of days, and he died. He was 130 years old when he died, and they buried him in the city of David among the kings because he had done good in Israel, but toward God in his house. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. So he did good in Israel both toward God and his house. Now after the death of Jehoiada, the leader of Judah, came and bowed down to the king, and the king listened to him listen to them therefore they left the house of the lord god of their fathers and served wooden images and idols and wrath came upon judah and jerusalem because of their trespass uh, yet he sent prophets to them to bring them back to the lord and they testified against them but they would not listen then the spirit of god came upon zechariah the son of Jehoiada the priest who stood above the people and said to them thus says god why do you transgress the commandments of the Lord so that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, he also has forsaken you. So they conspired against him, and at the command of the king, they stoned him with stones in the court of the house of the Lord. Thus Joash the king did not remember the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him, but killed his son. And as he died, he said, The Lord, look on it and repay. Ah. Death of Joash. So it happened in the spring of the year that the army of Syria came up against him and they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the leaders of the people from among the people and sent all their spoil to the king of Damascus. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men, but the Lord delivered a very great army into their hand because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. So they executed judgment against Joash. And when they had withdrawn from him, for they left him severely wounded, his own servants conspired against him because of the blood of the sons of Jehoiada the priest and killed him on his bed, so he died. And they buried him in the city of David, but they did not bury him in the tombs of the kings. These are the ones who conspired against him. Zab, Zabad, the son of Shemith, the Ammonitus, the Ammonitus, and Jehozabad, the son of Shimrith, the Moabites. Now concerning his sons and the many oracles about him and the repairing of the house of God, indeed they are written in the annals of the book of the kings. Then Amaziah, his son, reigned in his place. We made it to 25. It's a little bit lengthy, but let's go ahead and, and uh, trudge through it, right? And then if I don't make sense, you can always go back. It's a good uh, story. Well, good stories. It's a lot happening. Um, here. So Amaziah reigns in Judah. Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehodan of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a loyal heart. Now it happened, as soon as the kingdom was established for him, that he executed his servants who had murdered his father, the king. However, he did not execute their children, but did as it is written in the law, in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, The fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor shall their children be put to death for their fathers, but a person shall die for his own sin. So he, he spared the children because they didn't do anything. It was their, the generation above them, their, their fathers. Mm, the war against Adam. Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah together and set over them captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, according to their fathers' houses, throughout all Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them from 20 years old and above and found them to be 300,000 choice men able to go to war who could handle spear and shield. He also hired 100,000 mighty men of valor from Israel for the 100 talents of silver. But a man of God came to him saying, O king, do not let the army of Israel go with you for the Lord is not with Israel, not with any of the children of Ephraim. 
But if you go, be gone, be strong in battle. Even so, God shall make you fall before the enemy, for God has power to help and to overthrow. Then Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do about the hundred talents which I have given to the troops of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give you much more than this. So Amaziah, Amaziah discharged the troops that had come to him from Ephraim to go back home. Therefore their anger was greatly aroused against Judah, and they returned home in great anger. Then Amaziah strengthened himself, and leading his people, he went to the valley of salt and killed 10,000 of the people of Seir. Also the children of Judah took captive 10,000 alive, brought them to the top of the rock, and cast them down from the top of the rock, so that they all were dashed in pieces. But as for the soldiers of the army which Amaziah had discharged, so they would not go with him to battle, they raided the cities of Judah from Samaria to Beth Horon, killed 3,000 in them, and took much spoil. Now it was so after Amaziah came from the slaughter of the Edomites that he brought the gods of the people of Seir, set them up to be his gods, and bowed down before them and burned incense to them. Therefore the anger of the Lord was aroused against Amaziah, and he sent, and he sent him a prophet who said to him, Why have you sought the gods of the people which could not rescue their own people from your hand? So it was, as he talked with him, that the king said to him, Have we made the king's have we made you the king's counselor? Cease, why should why should you be killed? Then the prophet ceased and said, I know that God has determined to destroy you, because you have done this and have not heeded my advice. Israel defeats Judah. Now Amaziah, king of Judah, asked advice and sent to Joash the son of Jehoaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us face one another in battle. And Joash, king of Israel, sent to Amaziah, king of Judah, saying, The thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son as wife. And a wild beast that was in Lebanon passed by and trampled the thistle. Indeed, you say that you have defeated the Edomites, and your heart is lifted up to boast. Stay at home now. Why, why should you meddle with trouble that you should fall, you and Judah, with you? But Amaziah would not heed for it. For it came from God that he might give them into the hand of their enemies because they sought the gods of Edom. So Joash, king of Israel, went out, and he and Amaziah, king of Judah, faced one another at Beth Shemesh, which belongs to Judah. And Judah was defeated by Israel, and every man fled to his tent. Then Joash, the king of Israel, captured Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Jehoaz, at Beth Shemesh, and he brought him to Jerusalem and broke down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, 400 cubits, and he took all the gold and silver and the articles that were found in the house of God with Obed-Edom, the treasures of the king's house and hostages, and returned to Samaria. Wow, he stole from the house of the Lord. Amaziah, <laughs> Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived 15 years after the death of Joash, the son of Jehoaz, king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah from first to last, indeed are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. After the time that Amaziah turned away from following the Lord, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish, but they sent after him to Lachish and killed him there. Then they brought him on horses and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. Blessed be the word of the Lord. There was a lot going on there, a lot of king against king and Judah and Israel and Jerusalem and uh, stealing from the house of the Lord and uh, worshiping bells and not listening to the prophet. And, uh, so I hope you received a message. And as always, thanks for joining. Hope you're blessed. Take care of yourself. God bless you.